Uh, do we? Does the fandom in general want Kevin to have an original character boyfriend? Do we want him to end up with Moose again? Vote now on your phones. <laughs> Sugar. Oh, honey, honey. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Tara's Books and Beyond. Here again with my friend Lindsay for episode four of our Riverdale recaps. So it was a rather happy, heavy episode. This. Yeah, it started time. off kind of innocuous, though. Yeah. It was just Jughead being sad that the drive-in that he works at is closing down. The town has decided to sell off the property to an anonymous buyer. So he's spending the whole episode trying to figure out who's purchased it, trying to get people to, like, delay it or just stop the demolition of the thing. But everyone's like, no, it's it's become a cesspool. It's a hive of scum and villainy. Yeah, all because there's this biker gang that hangs out around there. The south side serpents. Yeah, spend the time doing... You know, we actually don't see them do much. Yeah. We don't see them doing anything rowdier than being obnoxious. Ooh, yeah. There's also Betty gets her first narration because she's doing her Dear Diary thing. Yeah, she literally goes, Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Today even more shit went fucked in Riverdale. <laughs> so let's see. Cheryl tries to be a bitch. Yeah. As usual. Yeah, I guess she just kind of forgot about all the stuff that she's been going through over the past week and how Betty and Veronica have been trying to help her and she's just still treating them like dirt. Yeah, because she fluctuates between, you know, being an understandable person and being something out of, yeah, a teen comedy. Yeah, Veronica actually does call her a stock character from a 90s teen movie. And we also, this is an episode that deals heavily on Miss Grundy yeah. and Archie. We get some flashbacks seeing them having sex on every surface. Yeah, yeah. They banged on a piano. At the school. <laughs> yeah. <Ugh. laughs> oh, God. If that word got out, <laughs> that piano would be gone. Burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it out of its misery. Yeah. Almost everyone ends up at the chocolate shop because Fred invites Grundy to go to dinner with him and Archie. Last week and this week, he's been kind of flirty with her, which is like, it's like 50 shades of bad touch. So they're at the chocolate shop. Meanwhile, Jughead and Kevin and Betty and Veronica are also there. And Jughead's trying to get people to come to the last picture show, which is what the episode's called. Cheryl sees Veronica's mom, Hermione, getting into a heat argument with one of the Southside Serpents behind the chocolate shop. Um, outside of Pops, <laughs> Betty confronts Archie. And just like basically keep it in your pants, and then Veronica barges out because she is uncomfortable. <laughs> She's uncomfortable when things are not about her. Pretty use pretty much every term they can other than statutory rape. They should have just said statutory rape. But at least at some point they said child predator. Betty decides to investigate Grundy because of all the stuff going down. She like interviews her for a fake newspaper article. And Grundy just does a whole lot of bag blogging about like, oh, Miss Grundy, where have you taught before? Oh, you know, here and there, places, you know, areas that exist. Something's not right here. And then Betty does a bit more digging and finds out that, oh yeah, the actual Miss Grundy who looks like the Miss Grundy in the comic books died seven years ago. She also finds out that fake Grundy was tutoring Jason Blossom. Yeah, so that sends up a whole bunch of bad signals. Even though I don't think anything actually came of that. But it might set up for something later. Uh, I guess so. Cheryl tells Veronica about this, her mom and the serpent thing, and Veronica asks her mom, and her mom also dances around the question, like, no, Hermione, I thought you were one of the good parents. But then again, when your husband is in prison for embezzlement and you're trying to get your life back together, you are going to be desperate. That's true. And she is like, it's clear that she's still protecting Veronica, and it's a better kind of protecting than... Alice root through my daughter's laundry to read through her diary, Cooper. Yeah, we'll get back to that in a bit. Yeah, so Jughead, he meets with Mayor McCoy and with Archie's dad to try and get them to delay the drive-in destruction. Yeah, the tearing down of the drive-in. And they're like, no, we have to do this for the betterment. And um, he's like, this it's a Riverdale icon. And it's like a second home to me because me and my sister Jellybean used to sneak in there with our parents because we couldn't afford it. Jughead also basically implies that his dad was fired by... Archie's dad right. for stealing stuff. Yeah, Archie's dad firing Jughead's dad may have been one of the factors that contributed to Archie and Jughead ending their friendship over the summer. Yeah, because like if, you know, your dad made my life harder, then how can I really be around you? Mm -hmm. They do get into a lot of the parents' stuff because Hermione points out, again with the Southside Serpent, she says like, I went to school with a lot of them because we were teenagers and so we were just catching up. And she mentions how she went on a date with Archie's dad. Oh, and Hermione talks about going to school with the Blossoms. Alice clearly knows about Fred and his history with his former wife. I mean, she calls him an adulterer even though they're separated. Maybe on a purely technical level, maybe the divorce hasn't 
officially Maybe. happened yet. Or maybe Alice just likes to go around shaming people. Also, they say that uh, apparently the Cooper family has an issue with mental health. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Because Betty says that people might start thinking like mother, like daughter. Betty confronts Archie about the real Geraldine Grundy dying and how the current one like is most likely a fake because all of her social media stuff just appeared a year ago. And Archie's like, Ed, Betty, please back off. I love her. And Betty's like, that seems fake, but okay. But then she gets Veronica to help her break into Miss Grundy's car anyways. Yeah, while Archie is over at Miss Grundy's. It's a great scene because Betty, she, like, she breaks into the car and she's like, yeah, I learned that from my dad. I used to help him fix cars. And then they get in there and they find a lockbox and Betty's like, give me a pie pin. And then she like unlocks it and she's like, and I learned that from Nancy Drew. It was very flirty beanie. <laughs> And they do indeed find a previous ID and a gun. Little, tiny little muzzle sort of thing. Not very impressive. No. <laughs> Honestly, it looked like a flare gun. The, the bribe. Yeah, so back in, wasn't it the first episode? Yes. Um, uh, Hermione, at the end of the first episode, got a big bag of cash. And it wasn't implied what it was going to be used for. Like, I think we initially thought it was like living expenses or something. Yeah. Thanks, Hiram. But no, it turns out that it was a bribe. A contribution to the campaign. Yeah. So that the mayor wouldn't release that Lodge Industries bought the lot. Yeah. Because as we eventually find out near the end of the episode, because her, uh, Veronica confronts Hermione again after seeing her and doing another meeting with the serpent. The serpents were hired by Hiram to devalue the property so that he could buy it at a discount. With an offshore account. Yes. So Hermione um, is basically stuck being the middleman, giving bribes to the mayor, paying off the serpents, and making sure that everything is hush-hush. And they also beat the Blossoms to the deal? Yes. Yeah. The Blossoms were also, it sounded like the Blossoms were after it too. Yeah. And they say it's like the best piece of land. For something. Like, they're not saying what, if there's any plan. Does it have a great view? Yeah. Is there a body underneath it? Because <laughs> like, like, what's the actual plan? Don't just buy a plot of land without telling people like when you it's probably like one of the spots downtown here where they dig up a plot of land put a fence around it say new apartment building coming and then it sits like that for eight years so there was that and the, the kellers the kellers it was a nice little scene uh he tells his dad that he's going to the movie theater for the last showing with veronica and he's like aren't there any other cute guy guys at school and he's like yeah me <laughs> He's like, I am the gay. I think the rest of the conversation is like, don't go cruising in the woods. Because remember what happened last time? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know dad. And dad is still like, there are murderers out there. I get it, dad. Well, lucky for Kevin, yeah. when he gets there, he ends up being confronted by one of the younger Southside serpents. And then... <laughs> Okay, okay. This time I really need to go. <laughs> Kevin's getting some dick. Kevin's getting some dick. Okay. Kevin's getting some dick. It's gonna lead to trouble. I'm, honestly, I'm more concerned for Joaquin, I guess, yeah. than I am for Kevin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, going back to the scene with uh, Kevin and his dad. Right. Uh, Kevin also comments on his dad's, like, m map. Oh, yeah. Of evidence. Murder yeah. board. Yeah. He calls it the murder board. It's nice. I think everyone calls those murder birds at this point. Yeah, yeah. Even, even if no one died, it could just be like for Petty Robert who's like, hey dad, nice murder board. <laughs> Going back to the last showing at the drive-thru, it is Rebel Without a Cause because, of course, the first clip that they show is of James Dean going, you're tearing me apart! Yeah. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Probably because of foreshadowing. I've, I've, never, so, I've never seen Rebel Without a Cause. So. I would say so because Betty and her issues and okay. Archie and his issues. Speaking of Betty's issues, her mom shows up, goes through Betty's diary, finds out about the Grundy stuff, which is honestly, it's the best outcome of the shitty thing because she could have read it completely out of context and thought like it was Archie's gun because oh yeah, Betty sold Grundy's gun. It's like, uh, that's the big no-no. Betty... <laughs> Don't take evidence. Yeah. Especially when you have no way of, like, not leaving your own fingerprints all over it. You should have just put it back, Betty. I'm giving it to Dilton. 
Oh, fuck. Alice shows up. She drags Fred away. Yeah. All three of them end up barging in on Archie and Grundy, about to get down. As like a goodbye, just to end the relationship. Yeah. And Fred is like, he's very concerned about his son. And Archie's like, Grundy did nothing wrong. And Grundy's like, I kind of did some stuff wrong, Archie. I'm not sure how you haven't figured that out yet. Alice starts freaking out and she's like, look at this mess, Betty. Look at what kind of person Archie is. And Fred is like, okay, Alice, calm the fuck down. He's like, I thought you were concerned about my son. I didn't realize you were going to somehow blame him for this too. Betty confronts her mom later on and says, like, don't compare me to Polly and me and Archie to Polly and Jason. Mm -hmm. And I think Fred is thinking the exact same thing. But yeah, so Archie and Grundy, they like have an emotional goodbye. Yeah. But Grundy's like, I'll just leave and I'll never come back. And it's the best for everyone. But I'll always remember what we had, Archie. And then as the episode is ending, she's like going back to her car with her slushy and her heart glasses. And she's watching two different teenage boys go down I the street. I think Reggie and... Yeah, Reggie and someone else. And she's yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, because earlier she had given a sob story about how she had an abusive husband. At which point I'm like, I want to believe you. Whether it's true or not, domestic assault does not a pedophile make. So Grundy has a type, and that type is illegal. And as the episode ends, Archie and Betty make up again. Yeah. I think it's going to stick this time. Yeah. Because now he doesn't have anyone else to distract him from the real love triangle that we're all here for, in which both him and Veronica compete for Betty's affections. <laughs> Nice reversal of what it used to be. Yeah. The sheriff's station is broken into, and someone has completely torn everything off of the murder board. Yeah, so it was either the serpents... Probably was a serpent. No, I don't want Joaquin to be a bad guy. But, but it seems like they're more in the pay of other people. The only other two suspects I could think of, like, aside from the murderer who knows that Sheriff Keller is on the case and maybe has figured out that, oh crap, he's close to finding out mm -hmm. that it was me, are the Blossoms who are covering up whatever reason Jason ran away. Or it's Lodges who are like, oh crap, they're going to find out about this whole, you know, shady dealing. Yeah, but I could see Joaquin having gone close to Kevin to get, like, the keys yeah. to the office. Yeah, but at the same time, I think it was probably just, like, a higher job. It wasn't yeah. Delicious. And I feel, I don't know, just the, their interactions. Like, Joaquin was kind of, like, slightly... Nervous. Slightly nervous about it. And he's like, I got the sense that he actually kind of liked Kevin. Yeah, and, you know, didn't want to do anything that would actually hurt him. Maybe Joaquin's just there for, to be the serpent's game out of Hari. We also learn at the very end that oh, poor yeah. Jughead actually did live. He's at... li living in the drive-in. Yeah. And yeah. his dad is... The leader um, yeah. of the serpents. At the end, his dad's like, where are you going to go, Jug? And Jug's like, I'll figure it out. I'm trying to figure out Jughead and his dad's relationship. I, I get the sense that it's okay. Nobody's being hurt. Not abusive. Not abusive. Just broken. It's the whole fact that the people surrounding his it's dad. It's probably, well, the yeah. fact, his, mo his mom and his sister Jellybean. They were mentioned, there. but they weren't there. Yeah. So it's looking like it's more a case of, Dad, you broke up this family. Yeah. With your dealings with the serpents. And like at the beginning, he mentions that they didn't have much money. So his dad probably started off as like a minor member of them to support the family. And over time became part yeah. of the leadership. Obviously, if he's in the leadership, he yeah. likes the power and he's got there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of serpents hanging around. Oh shit. What if, fuck, what if Jelly Bean got seized by social services? Oh no. And then the mom She'll... would have left because she's pissed. Yeah. And Jughead wouldn't want to, and had anything to do with his dad. He, yeah, so... Even Jughead seems like the kind of person who would have tried to track her down and get her back. Even, like, be the person who's like, I'll be Jelly Bean's guardian! And the gardens are like, you're 15. Maybe he can stay with the pussycats. Because they didn't even show up this episode. Yeah. I miss my musical interlude. Not even not even to just like have a cameo appearance at the drive-in. That was the episode. I liked it. Me too. How many milkshakes? <laughs> um, I'd give it, you know, I'll give it three and a half. It got the job done. There was a few weak points, I think. Mainly because it was so focused on the Grundy and also wrapping it up. Yeah. That didn't contribute as much to the Overall, season plot. Other than like dropping the hint that Grundy might have something to do with Jason. Yeah, but I doubt that. Yeah. I think of all the red herrings, that's the reddest. Yeah. But I think that's everything. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. And until then, that's what happened in a little town called Riverdale. That is such a big sign-off. I know. Kevin's getting some dick eventually. Kevin's getting some dick eventually.